My name is Jennifer Chang. I'm 32. My Korean name is Chung Jaehan, and I was born in Seoul, South Korea. I moved to America when I was probably 13 months old, very young, because my dad had gotten a job as a Korean DJ at a radio station in San Francisco. So that's what brought us to America. It was supposed to be temporary, but I think my mom was adamant about us living in America. I would say growing up in San Francisco was awesome because I was surrounded by a lot of Asian Americans, actually. I didn't feel the racial tension as a Korean. And because my mom was a Korean traditional dance teacher, I had no choice but to really embrace my Korean culture. My mom and my dad split when I was around five years old, so my mom ended up becoming a single mom. My brother was also born in San Francisco, and he's three years younger than me. So imagine a Korean immigrant who barely spoke English raising two kids on her own in the Bay Area. And on top of that, she was a dance teacher. So I did feel less than because of our socioeconomic background within the Korean community. I felt like there was a huge responsibility for me to fill. You know, there's a Korean saying, you can't fool blood. My grandmother was an artist, my mom's an artist, I'm an artist, my dad was also an artist. I think it's just something that's been normalized within our family, that that's what we were born with in a way, in terms of our talents of wanting to make music and act and dance. But uh, we had to figure out a way to make it work in America. My parents split when I was five, and my dad moved back to Korea. We would visit him every summer until I was about 13. And then after that, we just stopped seeing each other, stopped contacting one another. But nine years ago, I had actually reunited with my dad. I learned a lot more about him, and he learned a lot more about me. There's a lot of forgiveness there that I didn't think that I had to forgive because, you know, there are kids who grew up with their dads and then divorce happens or they get separated and they feel that loss. For myself, I never grew up with a father, so there was no loss. It was just not knowing what that looked like. It's been nice, though, reconciling with him in ways I didn't know I had to. For me, faith is a big part of my life. Although uh, my parents didn't raise me in the church because after they divorced, you know, a lot of Korean gossip and people, you know, scaring my mom away from the church. But my faith still holds true to this day because I think it was my choice and it was an experience that I had on my own. I kid you not, like after a few months I was in Korea, that's when my husband and I started talking. And I think that was all in God's plan. So growing up, we basically lived in my mom's van. Performing was a normalized thing. Stages, grew up in all of them. But music felt like it was mine. And it was in elementary school when I started performing in talent shows, just singing. Uh, in high school, I started doing musical theater. And that's what influenced me to study drama at UC Irvine. And it was the summer before college that I had my first viral video. And I think a part of it is because there is a lack of representation online, especially back then. There was an opportunity for people to share and just be like, check out this Asian girl singing Alicia Keys. They're not saying I'm good, they're not saying I'm bad, they're just stoked to see someone who may represent them. And that influenced my college experience because then people started recognizing YouTubers. I was considered one like early on and it felt like almost every weekend I would travel to a different state to perform. Because when I was younger, I was always performing like Disney songs and everything that got me into loving theater and musicals. And in college was when I um, wanted to study it, but there was something about like the limiting beliefs of the faculty or those surrounded by me. It was more so, oh, you're Asian, so you'd be great in Miss Saigon. But realistically, there aren't a lot of theater productions that are Asian centric, although there are now. I think especially back then there wasn't. And even when it comes to the Korean beauty standards of what is a criteria to be a successful artist, I don't think I fit that mold. I also wasn't willing to get surgery and all these things that a lot of people are called to do, especially in the Korean music industry. And for me, I, I knew that I wanted to be in America and that meant I had to do it and find my own way to do it. But yeah, I wasn't really pursuing acting after college. I was adamant about graduating in three years because I was paying for it and figuring out how can I do music full time. And back then there was no music streams. You literally had to sell CDs, do performances, sell your merch. And it was really tough. I think that was probably the darkest and hardest time of my life was right after college. 
I knew I was never going to go back to my mom's place. There was just no space for me. And I had to support myself. So I worked so many part-time jobs. I was working at a restaurant while I was working at a boba shop while I was working at Sephora. And all the while, like, I'll be making hourly wage, but I could make significantly more for singing for 30 minutes. But it just wasn't sustainable. I think there was just so much uncertainty of like, how can we make this work? How am I going to see a future? And I remember even back then, like when I was dating, like someone broke up with me because they said, you don't have a backup plan. And it felt so crazy to me because I'm young, I'm supposed to be working hard and trying to do everything that I can, but there were these outside things that were making me feel like it wasn't for me. In hindsight, I know that it was just to really teach me what I really wanted and what my values were. And in 2019 was when I booked my first TV audition. The first TV episode I booked was Lovecraft Country on HBO. And that episode took place in Korea. I think that's a really special thing to be able to say, yeah, my first experience on a SAG set was with a bunch of Korean people because it's not a common thing. A year ago, I founded Today Worthy and it's a life and creative community, and I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I found that there's something um, to be said that our white counterparts have a lot of resources and access. There's a lot of mentorship going on. Coaching industry is huge there. And I wanted to be someone who could be a voice. I'm supporting them as actors, artists, um, people who are starting their own coffee businesses, and um, occupational therapists. Just being a resource to let them know that I'm here to support them and prioritize self-care and boundaries, what that looks like. There's a huge need for self-help and discovery. I don't think our parents' generation may have had the opportunity or the privilege to really discover that, but we're here so we might as well really take care of ourselves so that we could show up in whatever work that we want to do. As an actor, the types of auditions I get or the types of opportunities that I get, a lot of times, the gatekeepers are people who maybe don't see us to our full humanized um, experience. So there's a part of me that wants to be like, ah, do I want to keep doing this? Um, but there's also a part of me that's like, yeah, because you need to be representing every way you can. Um, because if your only experience with an Asian person is at that one place that you go to, that's all you'll see us as, as, that, as that person. That's why I encourage everyone to be everywhere. You know, try that thing that you want to try. Be where you want to be. This is the most peace I've ever felt in my life. It takes a lot of time to figure out what you want to do and why you want to do it. And although there are things that I could think about in the future that I want to accomplish and I don't know if I'll ever get there, I know that I have to feel that joy now. And although there's a lot of stuff that we can still be doing, um, if my younger self could know that I'd get this far, she wouldn't believe it. There's been a lie that I've, I think a lot of us have been told that you have to be the master at this one thing. But the truth is, we are complex human beings who are capable of doing a lot. There was a time when someone told me, Jennifer, you have to love music so much that you would die if you didn't get to do music. And I just knew that that could never ring true to me because there could be a day where I just can't use my voice anymore and I can't do music. So what does that mean for my value? That's why when I have a curiosity of something, I want to be able to try it and see if this is something that I can incorporate in my life for the rest of my life. And I think that's the privilege that I have as someone who is growing up here, who can be challenged on what um, a good life could be. It's so special to be Korean American because we are the result of um, the rebels or the pioneers of our, of our parents and their parents. For those who are watching this, if you are the future, I hope that you are figuring out what's right for you because that's still the Korean American way. My name is Jennifer Chung, and this is my Korean American story. Mm -hmm.